always sub $80. I think this is 70 bucks right now at the time I, I purchased this. And I did buy this, um, smashed into it. Hey, Brian Miller here and welcome to Audio for Content Creators where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. And this is gonna be a very short review slash demonstration of kind of an older mic at this point. This is the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB. And the reason I'm talking about such an old mic is this was one of the first, I mean, it may not have been the first, but it was one of the first versions of an XLR USB combination microphone, which have become incredibly popular for content creators, and especially these days, uh, 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 entry-level podcasters who don't know much about audio, but they do want to uh, have better sound than the microphone built into their computer or their phone or whatever. And so they get a USB XLR combination mic, and the advantage of that is that you can use the USB, plug it directly into the computer, and just start your podcast. But then down the road, when you get better and you want to level up your audio, you can buy an audio interface, and you don't have to buy a new mic because you can just plug it via XLR, a professional XLR input, directly into your audio interface, and that is fantastic. Now. I'm using this microphone. I'm gonna be talking into it the entire video in many different ways. We're gonna demo all the different ways of using it. Currently, I'm speaking into it uh, via USB. It's going via USB directly into the computer and I'm capturing it via audio hijack. And now I've got it here on a simple desktop stand. It's worth noting that I'm not using the clip that actually comes with this microphone. Uh, the uh, the mic does come with a, uh, a clip, uh, but the problem is that this plastic at the bottom of the clip has not been fit well or not been cut well, and I could not get this on without forcing it onto a standard uh, microphone stand, even though uh, the thread is the right size. The plastic around the outside prevented me from screwing this on. So it's worth noting that uh, you may end up needing to get your own clip, but luckily these are these are very cheap. It also comes with a little tabletop stand, which as you can see, is completely useless because that would make the microphone, I don't know, 12 inches below <laughs> my uh, my mouth, and that would not be, uh, be helpful at all, really. So this is useless, this is useless, you can ignore that. But it's very cool that it actually comes with a um, an XLR cable as well. So if you don't already have one, even if you're planning on using this via USB, when you decide to upgrade, because you will decide to upgrade eventually, uh, you can just use the XLR cable that's already included. And it's um, it's fine. It's cheap. It came with it. But it's fine. And it comes with a fake leather carrying case, which uh, barely fits the microphone. <laughs> cool. Now let's talk about the microphone itself. Uh, what do we have here? Well, we have an on-off switch, which... I don't love having an on-off switch on a microphone. I think every time there's an on-off switch, it is much more likely that you're going to accidentally turn it off, leave it off, um, accidentally turn it off in the middle of a recording. If you give it to a guest, they might turn it off. I don't love having it. Plus, when uh, when it's on, it has it's, there's this blue light, which is nice for you to know that it's on, but I find really distracting to have a light on a microphone. So, of course, you could put a little, little piece of black electrical tape over that if you wanted to. Uh, there is, on the back of it, a, uh, a headphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter. So, uh, in theory, I could go up here and change the output to doo -doo 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 AT2005 USB. And then, by manipulating this, as you can see, I can actually change the... Um, Oh, there we go. If you're using this as a USB interface, which I wasn't a second ago, if you're using the USB as your audio interface, this microphone as an audio interface, then uh, this toggle right here, kind of left-right toggle, uh, actually does affect the headphone output, and therefore I can really hear myself better now uh, than I was just a second ago, which is fantastic. Then you see the XLR connector, and in just a little bit, I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the USB audio quality and the X and using it as an XLR uh, audio quality. There's a significant difference, so look out for that in just a few minutes. And of course, there's the USB connector itself. Now this is an old microphone. It is a mini USB, not a micro, not a USB-C. It's a mini USB, but they provide an incredibly long, here, let me give you the, the, the kind of top-down view. 
a very, very long USB cable, uh, which means if you needed to, you could get really far away uh, from the computer if you had fan noise or anything like that. The reason I love this mic is because it is a dynamic microphone. Many USB microphones are condenser, and condenser microphones are very, very uh, sensitive. They pick up everything. They, could, they pick up a butterfly flapping its wings three states over, right? Anything in your house, anything in your neighborhood, anything outside, fan noise, air conditioning, baby crying dog barking, you're going to hear everything with a condenser mic. But this is a, is a dynamic microphone, much less sensitive, which means you need to stay pretty close to it. But the advantage is, is much, much better for rejecting background noise and anything that you don't want in your recording, which is why dynamic microphones are absolutely the best bet for most content creators who are not in pristine, sound-treated, quiet environments like I am. And now that we've heard this microphone in the context of USB audio quality for a while, you've gotten a you've gotten a sense of how it sounds, you've gotten a sense of the plosives, P, P, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It's worth noting, this does not have great plosive rejection, so there's a very good chance you would want to put a pop filter in front of this. Actually, let me let me do that right now. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 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 You can hear that there's a complete difference in plosive rejection by using a simple pop filter, which you could, you know, attach to uh, to a stand with a gooseneck and just keep it right here in front of you, and then you'd be good to go. Check, check, one, two, test, test, test. And now you are listening to this microphone going through the XLR cable into my Tascam Model 12. So I'm using pretty good preamps, and I'm using the XLR connection, uh, but there was no other processing, just like there was no processing at any point in this video on the mic ever. Uh, so in just a second, I'm going to give you a chance to hear, uh, because I'm recording now USB in the computer, and I'm recording directly onto the Model 12. So I'm going to give you the exact same phrase, the exact same recording played twice uh, with XLR and USB, so you can hear the difference. Leap out of an airplane, but take a safety class first, and wear a parachute. Leap out of an airplane, but take a safety class first, and wear a parachute. The key to finding a balance is to approach new or uncertain situations under controlled conditions. The key to finding a balance is to approach new or uncertain situations under controlled conditions. That's why it's easier to meet new people if you're out with friends. You get to take a leap of faith by chatting up strangers, but land safely with your friends if it doesn't work out. That's why it's easier to meet new people if you're out with friends. You get to take a leap of faith by chatting up strangers, but land safely with your friends if it doesn't work out. I wrote this book. As you've undoubtedly noticed, the XLR recording is significantly warmer, fuller. It's got a, a better low-end response, and, and that is due to the fact that we are not using the preamp built into the microphone, right? When you go USB, your the microphone is using a built-in preamp that Audio-Technica put in here, which is typically not very good, right? You got the mic and then uh, the preamp and then an AD converter, which is the USB cable. It's all being built into one unit. Whereas when we're going XLR, we're actually only using this as a microphone. And then the preamp is this really nice one I'm using with the Model 12. And maybe you're only using a, an entry-level interface like a PreSonus audio box or a Focusrite 2i2. You will still gain significant preamp quality by using an entry-level interface. And then, again, the AD converter is from that interface. In this case, the Model 12. In your case, whatever it is. Uh, and so when you use an XLR connection, it's not the fact that it's an XLR cable as opposed to USB. It's the fact that you're taking the crappy low-end preamp and AD converter from the microphone out of the equation. That's the difference. And what do I think of the tone of this microphone? I think it's pretty good. Uh, it's a little mid-focused as far as I can tell, uh, and I have kind of a mid-range, I, I mean, I have a deep voice, but I have a pretty prominent uh, nasal quality in the five to 600 hertz range in my voice. So microphones like this and the SM58 from Shure, you know, kind of famous dynamic handheld cardioid microphones, um, they don't do me a lot of favors in the mid-range because they're designed to boost the mid-range and I kind of have a honky quality to begin with that I always need to 
notch out. Um, but having said that, I think this has a really, really good, um, a really good sound. And and for the price, getting the XLR and the USB with audio monitoring, the ability to use it as an audio interface directly with your computer if you're new to it or switch over to XLR later as you grow with it, the fact that you can hand hold it or stick it on a, 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 on, on a mic stand. I mean, this is an incredibly versatile mic that I seriously recommend for anybody who's looking to get into podcasting or live streaming and really wants to uh, have something that they can grow with that has good quality to start with but they can also grow with now there's something that you need to know about dynamic microphones which i already mentioned early in the video and that is they're not very sensitive i am eating the microphone right now i mean i am here i am only i don't know what what is this? An inch and a half off the microphone, and I'm here the whole time. Watch what happens if I move even an inch further away. Now I'm about uh, two inches away, and you notice that the tone changed significantly. And if I go even further, four or five inches away, the tone completely drops off. It's not just that it got quieter; the tone changes significantly. And at this point, you may as well not even be using a microphone. You may as well be talking into a uh, into a tin can. But right here is a sweet spot. Within about two inches of a dynamic microphone, you're really going to get the best tone. Now, you can get all the way up on this thing and really engage the proximity effect. I find this ends up sounding way too bassy, uh, just like it would with the SM58. It doesn't sound as broadcasty as you'd think it does. It just sounds muddy and ugly. Plus, you get all the plosives that you're never going to be able to get rid of if you get this close to it. But if you get about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches off the microphone, kind of talk past it if you don't want to use a pop filter, you get a really, really nice broadcast sound with this thing. And again, there is no processing on this. And for the price, I think you'd be in very good shape. So do I recommend the Audio-Technica AT2005 USB? Absolutely. You know, there are a lot of different USB XLR combination microphones on the market these days. Many of them are condenser. Watch out for that. But if you're looking at dynamic microphones that have USB and XLR capability, the price on this is fantastic. I'll list that. They change sometimes, so that's why I never say the price out loud in videos because a year from now it might be different but check the description for the link uh to the mic and you'll see what the current price is it's always sub a hundred dollars it's almost always sub eighty dollars i think this is 70 bucks right now at the time i i purchased this and i did buy this um smashed into it and i did buy this with my own money this is not sponsored i have no relationship with audio technica um i'm really i really think this would be an excellent choice for a budget conscious content creator who also wants quality. And that'll do it for today's video. If you have any further follow-up questions on the AT2005 USB, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this, like the video. That makes a huge difference. Subscribe if you'd like to ding the notification bell and come back anytime to sound better and level up. And we'll see you soon. Hey.